Chapter 8, Lesson 8, Volume and Surface Area of Composite Figures. Today you will learn how to find the volume and the surface area of composite figures. The volume of a composite figure can be found by separating the figure into solids whose volumes you know how to find. A. Find the volume of the composite figure. So this figure right here can be broken down into two rectangular prisms. If I were to draw a line right here and cut off this rectangular prism. So this length would be 16, this length would be 8, and this length will match this length, so it is 6. On the smaller rectangular prism, this is 6. The side length is 8. And if we take a look, this long dimension is 16 inches. And I know this piece is 8. So what is this dimension? Good, it's 8. So I'm going to call this figure A. And I might call this figure B. So what we're going to do is find the volumes of each of them separately and then add them together. So the volume of figure A, it is a rectangular prism, so it's length times width times height. The volume is 16 times 8 times 6. The volume is 768 inches cubed. That's figure A. Figure B, volume of B, it's also a rectangular prism, length times width times height, volume equals 8 times 8 times 6. The volume of figure B is 380, oops, 384 inches cubed. I'm going to rewrite that. 384. There we go. So then what I do is I take volume A plus volume B to get the area of the composite figure. So 768 plus 300. 84, add those together, you get 1,152, and our unit is inches cubed. Letter B, find the volume of the composite figure. So we have two shapes that make up this figure, a rectangular prism and a square pyramid. The dimensions of the rectangular prism are 8, 8, and 8, which actually makes it a specific kind of rectangular prism. It makes it a cube because all of the dimensions are the same. But we still find the volume the same way. Now our pyramid, our length and width are both 8 and our height right here is 5. So we'll call this figure A and this one figure B. Volume of A, it's still length times width times height. Volume of A is 8 times 8 times 8. Plug it into your calculator. The volume is 512 feet cubed. Let's find the volume of figure B. Now the pyramid is one third length width height. Volume equals, leave one third as a fraction. Length is eight, width is 8 and height is 5. <laughs> Volume equals, you will get a repeating decimal. 
106.6 repeating feet cubed. To find the volume of the composite figure, I take the volume of part A plus the volume of part B. So 512 plus 106.6 repeating. And we get an answer of 618.6 repeating feet cubed. Let's try one more volume. Find the volume of the composite figure. So this figure is made up of three rectangular prisms. This first one on the left has a dimension of 6 and 1. But what is this big dimension? The small dimension in here is 7. But what is this larger dimension? Good, it's 9. It's the same as the opposite side. With that in mind, I know these two pieces are the same. So 9, 1, and 6. Now this top one's a little tricky. I know the whole thing is 12. I know that these little pieces were 1. So the remaining piece right here is 12 minus 1 minus 1, or 10. I also know this dimension is 6 because this dimension matches the one here. And this height in here will be a little tricky. I know the outside is 9, the inside is 7. So to figure out that width there, we have to take the difference between 9 and 7, which is 2. So this little dimension is 2. So we'll call this figure A and this figure B. And again, I know figure A and figure B are the same, so I'm only going to find the volume once. And we'll call this figure C. So volume of A and B is length times width times height. Volume equals 9 times 6 times 1. Volume equals 54. But remember, there are two of them, so times 2. Volume equals 108 centimeters cubed. Volume of C is also length times width times height. Volume equals 10 times 6 times 2. Volume equals 120 centimeters cubed. To find the total volume, we take volume A and B, which we found already together, plus volume C. Volume A and B together were 108. Volume C is 120, which makes our total volume 228 centimeters cubed. The next part will be finding the surface area of composite figures. And I'm going to use um, the example from part B on the front to find the surface area. We need the surface of all of it. Now, we have the cube and the pyramid. But if you notice, the top of the cube is the bottom of the pyramid, and that's a hidden surface. We would not count that in the surface area. So we have four sides to the cube. And we have the bottom of the cube. And the top is a pyramid with a square base. So I have four surfaces on the top. Now, because this is a cube on the bottom, all of these dimensions are going to be the same. 
they're all going to be 8. So all of these are the same. And we have five of them. And taking a look at the pyramid on the top, again, because it's a square base, these are all eight on the bottom. And the heights are all the same. And we're going to look at the slant height for this. The heights are all 6.4. So these are also all the same, and there are four of them. When you have faces that are the same, you do not have to do the math twice. So let's look here first. Area, it is a square, so area equals length times width. Area equals 8 times 8. Area equals 64 but we have five that are identical. So the area of the bottom portion is 320 feet squared. And for the top part, area equals one half length times width. Area equals 0 0.5 times Eight times the width in this case is just the height, 6.4. Area equals, multiply those together, you would get 25.6. But there are four of them. So area equals 102.4 feet squared. To find the total surface area, we take the areas and add them together. So 320 plus 102.4 gives us a grand total of 422.4 feet cubed. Now this next one you're going to need a little bit of space for. I'm going to draw all my shapes along the side and we'll do all the math in the blank space. So let's take a look here. We have, let's start with the front of the shape. I have this odd shape. In fact, I have one in the back as well. And we'll do our measurements in a bit. I've also got this side over here. Okay, which actually let's put in some measurements so I don't forget. We'll call this um, side one. So I'll say side, oops, one. The writing doesn't work very well, so we won't continue to label, which is a length of two and a width of two. Let's take a look at the top. It's also a length of two and a width of two. Let's look at this top. We have this dimension, which is two, and this dimension here, which is one. If the whole thing is three and a part of it is two right here, then what's remaining is one. So the other top we have a two by one rectangle. So we took care of the tops, we took care of the front and the back, we took care of the left side, now what's left are the two right sides. So if this dimension is one by two, And looking at this dimension, if this whole side is 2, and this piece is 1, then this piece is also 1, and this is 2 as well. The only
only other side we're missing is the bottom. Which has a length of 3 and a width of 2. Okay. So let's see what we have. Oh, we have to label our front and our back. Our front and our back are actually two pieces. We have to break that apart. This length is 2. This length is 2. Since this bottom part is 3, I know that this length is 1. And also this length is 1. And the back is the same as the front. So I know that these two are the same. I know that these two are the same. These three are the same. And the bottom is on its own. So we only have to do essentially four math problems. So let's do the front and the back first. We have two different areas here. So the area of, we'll say, this first part and the second part, and we have two of each of them. Area equals of the first part, length times width. Area equals 2 times 2. Area equals 4, but we have two of them. So the area equals 8. The area of part B is length times width. Area equals 1 times 1. Area equals 1. And again, we have two of them. So the area equals 2. Add these two together. I'm just going to start a column over here. And we get 10 feet squared. Draw squiggly. Let's do these next ones. Area equals length times width. Area equals 2 times 2. Area equals 4. And I have two pieces that are identical. So this area is 8. Now let's do these three. Area equals length times width. Area equals 2 times 1. Area equals 2. And there are three pieces that are identical. So this area is 6. And our last one. Area equals length times width. Area equals 2 times 3. Area equals 6. There's only one of them, so I bring over the 6. And let's add all those areas together. We have 10 and 8, which make 18. Plus 6 is 24. Plus another 6. We're at a grand total of 30. So the surface area of this figure is 30 feet squared.